Self-sufficiency is a core tenant of RVing. After all, your rig is an independent traveling home free from the constraints of basements and property taxes. Your survival in the wild or a stress-free day on the park could come down to your RV toolkit. The first part of the video is going to be all about what kind of tools you should put in your RV toolkit to get the most out of your repairs and maintenance. And later on, I'm going to talk a little about the types of tools that I've had trouble with and the ones that I found really work for me. And by the way, no one's paid me to pick a particular brand that I flash in front of you. It's just my tools and what's worked for me. So let's get started. The number one reason I carry a fairly complete toolkit is twofold. One, I'm too cheap to pay someone else to do something I can do. And secondly, sometimes there is no one else. It can make your camping experience fantastic as there is a feeling of satisfaction that comes with getting yourself out of a jam, whether it's a flat tire, a broken hose, or the broken handle on your favorite coffee mug. Let me start with our three top tips regarding any toolkit. First, although it costs more, it's important to have a dedicated kit of tools, parts, and compounds solely for your RV. If you make it something that you have to pack to the RV or poach items for home use from the RV, you're apt to be missing the whole kit or an essential item. And this can happen when it's inconveniently far away from a hardware store to replace what you're missing or your mishap may make you unable to get there. Second tip, if you want to keep your toolkit as light and organized as possible, it should be the only kit you use to do most of the repairs and maintenance on your RV. By only using your RV toolkit, you can add the tools that you're missing when you're working on it and leave out all the ones you don't use. Odds are, you don't need every size of socket and screwdriver ever made to work on your RV. Your starting point for tools can be this list and a careful inspection of your RV using the tools from your kit. Finally, keep your toolkit in a handy place. If your repair is at the side of a highway, you don't want to have to empty your RV on the roadside to get to it. What if it's raining or cold or windy, or you're on the side of a narrow road with no shoulder? Repairs can be stressful enough, so reduce the stress by planning and preparing for tough situations. Now, if you're the kind of person that carries an automotive toolkit, some items will carry over into your RV toolkit. But many things in the RV toolkit will be unique. For instance, it's unlikely you'll ever use a caulking gun to fix your motorcycle or your truck. The size of your toolkit is also related to the size and the complexity of your RV. Since weight is always a factor when RVing, don't take more tools than you need. By the way, if you love to RV or are planning to start, please tap that like button, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you're the first to know when a new video comes out. Tools that you should have can be broken down into the challenges that you could face. Electrical, plumbing, and mechanical. Some essential tools are the same in every kit. In your basic kit, you should have an adjustable wrench, a multi-screwdriver, a hammer, vice grips, tongue and groove pliers, and needle nose pliers, a quality utility knife, ratchet straps, battery powered driver, a drill bit kit, and a ratchet and sockets in the sizes to match your RV including the wheel lugs. From a more advanced perspective, I also prefer to have a quality set of screwdrivers in the types that I use most. I also have a quality Leatherman multi-tool in a handy drawer for quick fixes, so I don't have to go to the main tool kit. And I also keep a flashlight charged since often things go wrong in the dark. Often RV challenges are electrical. So a crimper, stripper cutter tool, a multimeter, and a terminal brush will handle most fixes. Battery terminals tend to corrode and then they don't conduct anymore. Your battery won't charge and because we tend to neglect and store these batteries for a long time, it's a serious problem. These are about four bucks, so it's a cheap, instant fix, solve your problem. Mechanical are all the bits of your RV that move like tires and axles and slides, hinges. Your essential tools can handle most minor issues, but I'd suggest that you add a tire repair kit, a tire gauge, and a 12-volt air compressor. The compressor can be very inexpensive, but I'd suggest you spend as much as you can afford, as the more you spend, the more you get. By that I mean faster fill rates and better quality parts. The truth of the matter is, a compressor will only break down when you need it most. 
Some of the compressors that I have include a smaller one like this. Uh, I use this for my motorcycle. The tires are very small, they don't require a lot of air, and this can fill it up and repair it. I've had to use it actually a couple times to fix flats. Motorcycles don't have spare tires. For the RV, I'd suggest you go a little bigger. So this one happens to be a Motor Master, but there's lots of good brands out there. The big difference here is it's a twin cylinder, which means it'll fill a tire probably four times faster than that little one, maybe even faster, depending on the volume of air in the tire. Something like this is a little bit heavier, too heavy for a motorcycle, but in the RV, it's going to be a great thing. In the Jeep, where we air up tires and air down tires continually every time we go onto a trail, I have an even larger compressor that's capable of filling all four tires at the same time. And that one will also fill a tank and run air tools. Too big for my trailer, but great for the Jeep where I'm constantly using that air compressor. Plumbing and other water related issues will come up. And most of the tools we've talked about already will handle most of these as well. But here I would add the caulking gun the any size hose clamp maker, and a roll of stainless steel or steel with a rust inhibited coating. Now if you haven't seen it, this is kind of a unique tool and it's called a clamp type. Now with a roll of stainless, or in this case, it's a galvanized steel wire, I can make a hose clamp of virtually any dimension. We often need some compounds to help with our fixes. My essential list includes duct tape, T-Rex is my favorite, Gorilla Glue, Silicon Sealant, WD-40, Lithium Grease, Epoxy Putty, Electrical Contact Spray, some baling wire that we talked about earlier, Electrical Tape, some Shop Towels, Zip Ties, and Teflon Tape. Now working backwards a little bit, I do like to have zip ties in a couple of different sizes. So that's the larger size, and then one that's about half that. I keep that inside. Epoxy putty, if you haven't used it before, is pretty slick. So like a two-part epoxy that you might find, uh, comes in that double syringe squeeze tube, for instance, um, it needs to get mixed together in order to be hard. Now, I've used this since my days windsurfing, and for instance, some of you might have paddle boards that are actually made out of fiberglass. You cut a hunk of this off, you knead it together, and then that putty will go on wet. And once it's dry, you can sand it, paint it, and everything else. So this is a great, small, incredible compound to have in your RV. We talked about electrical contact. I wish I had a smaller container, but this is the only one I can find. Sometimes electrical problems are just a bad connection, and it could be moisture, for instance, that's in there. Electrical contact spray will fix that problem for you. Quick, easy fix. Um, silicon spray for the slides. There's all kinds of other ones out there, including some specialty labeled as RV slide, but typically any silicon lubricant will work for you. When you can't fix or find the old parts, you should have some spares. My list includes a few trailer signal light bulbs, big box of assorted hose clamps. When you go through your RV, there might be other things that you also need to fix that are not part of your RV, and fuses to match your RV. You can either find that in the owner's manual, or even better yet, go to your fuse panel and see what sizes you're going to need. In addition to those electrical fuses, I also tend to keep a few other bits of wire, connectors, uh, some O-rings, just those little things that you might need to make a job easy. And it might not even be in your RV, it might be fixing a margarita blender. I need a couple of twist ties, so I keep that in there. While you can go out and buy everything new in a complete handy kit, like me, you may not need everything that's in that kit. Or like me, you're too thrifty to buy new. Your local online classifieds and pawn shops may have what you need at a good discount. I suggest you familiarize yourself with what the tools cost new first. Then you'll have an idea of what you should pay for cheaper quality as well as better quality tools when you see them. I like buying hand tools used, but the battery powered items like a drill I prefer new. These kinds of tools suffer abuse that you can't see and batteries will lose their ability to hold a charge over time. When I've looked for replacement chargers and batteries, they cost virtually the same price as a new tool complete with new batteries and a charger. Top things off, throw in a head mounted flashlight, some safety glasses, work gloves to save yourself from those scraped knuckles, and a lot of times you're working in the cold and the wet, some rubber gloves, and you'll be set like Superman to solve most situations. What do you consider an essential tool, compound or part? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, share it. Smash that like button, and if you want to see more, please subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss a new episode. Until next time, 
Stay safe and we'll see you on the trails.